today is April the 1st, 2020. I cannot believe we're already in April. I cannot believe we're uh, in the position we are as a, as a nation as, and as a country, as a, as a world. We're, we are in utter turmoil right now. Um, but as I think about April, I'm reminded of my Savior because here we are just two weeks away from Resurrection Sunday. That is the proper terminology for the thing that we call Easter. Easter is associated with the bunny. Resurrection Sundays is associated with Jesus Christ, the one who arose from the grave and gave us victory over sin, sickness, disease, and death. <laughs> no Easter bunny can do that. And so that's why we come to the word of God regularly so that we can come and understand the perfect wisdom and knowledge that God has given to us that that um, saves us from these things. Easter bunnies and eggs and, and chocolate can't save our lives, but Jesus Christ can, and he does. And it's promised here, as we see in Proverbs chapter 11, picking up in verse 5, listen to what he says. The righteousness of the perfect shall direct his ways. The righteousness of the perfect shall direct his ways. <clears throat> Not saying that we are perfect, but that we put our faith and trust in the perfect one. And when we do that, we begin to walk and live as he has called us to walk and live. And therefore, uh, it's already accounted to us that we are perfect in the former or in the future state, but in the present state, we're still covered under the knowledge and the wisdom of walking and what it means to be perfect in behavior and action and thought. And so while we still struggle with those things to a degree, it's still the, the righteousness that's been given to us will be the righteousness that directs our way, and it comes from the perfect one. And that's where we put our hope and trust. Not that we're perfect, but we serve a perfect God. Uh, and so the righteousness of the perfect shall direct his way, but the wicked shall fall by his own wickedness. And so as the Bible says, there's a way that seemed right to a man, but the end thereof is destruction. Man's heart is fallen. And so his actions and his uh, his thoughts and his ways are going to lead to um, hurt and pain and destruction. That is the way of that's the way of the fallen heart, but the way of the righteous, the way that looks up to the perfect one and takes that wisdom and knowledge, his direct his um, path shall be directed. But the wicked shall fall by his own wickedness. Verse six: The righteousness of the upright shall deliver them. And so one day we're going to be delivered from all pain, suffering, sorrow, and death. We've been we've been promised that. That is a promise that cannot be taken away, no matter what we seem to be facing. In, in light of our lives today. And so we need to remind ourselves that the righteousness of the upright shall deliver them, but the transgressors shall be taken in their own naughtiness. It's going to come at a drop of a hat just like that. And this pandemic has really just shown us um, how quickly uh, things can change in our lives without us being able to control them or, or affect them at all. And so this is one thing that's why I say this is a glimpse of how God is preparing us and, and telling us that there is a way to escape uh, the fear and the worry and the anxiety of this pandemic, but it's only going to come through the perfect knowledge of the perfect one who can settle our hearts. Uh, as as has been said many times, uh, peace is not the absence of trouble, hmm, but the presence of Christ. And so we got the presence of Christ, the perfect one, over our lives, and we don't have to worry about the pandemics because we've got peace over our own heart situation. We know that it doesn't matter if it touches us and it comes. Yes, no one wants to uh, die today, but we know if it comes into our lives that we're going to be all right because we know that where we're going is better than where we have been. And we hate to leave people behind. No one, no one likes to think about those things, but the reality is, is that what lies ahead of you is so much better than what you have currently here. As Paul would say, for me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. It's much better on the other side where there is none of these sorrows and heartaches and pains and pandemics and sickness, diseases, and death. But yet we beg God to leave us here in the middle of all of this chaos. And I do understand the, t the uh, tensions on our hearts that pull us in those directions, but the righteousness, the righteousness uh, shall deliver him. Uh, um, as it says, the right, uh, the righteousness of the upright shall deliver them, but the transgressor shall be taken in his naughtiness. And then look at verse seven. When a wicked man dieth, 
His expect expectations shall perish. And the hope of the unjust men perishes. And so he says, <clears throat> those who seek to live life their way and seek to um, live life in a manner that, that promotes them rather than the people around them, they're more worried about themselves and, and what they want out of life rather than what's good for the whole lot. And this is certainly what we're getting to experience now with the stay for at home stuff and things like that, where we have to be wise and we have to protect our, our brothers and sisters around us so that uh, they have the opportunity to live uh, longer and to not affect others around us. And so we've got to do what is necessary uh, in that regard, because when a wicked man dieth, his expectation shall come to an end. And our goal in life is to see others come to know to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, that they don't perish without that knowledge, because when they perish, it's over. That's it for them. For the rest of eternity, they will spend it separated from God and in misery all the days of their life. And that is nothing that I want to see, but look at what it says in verse eight. The righteous is delivered out of trouble and the wicked and the wicked cometh in his stead. The righteous is delivered out of trouble. A wicked man, his hope <clears throat> perishes. And so there are two great contrasts here. One is saved and one is lost. And this is just the reality. It's not my reality, it's God's reality. And we need to follow it. But verse nine and we finish. A hypocrite with his mouth destroyeth his neighbor. But through knowledge shall the just be delivered. A hypocrite with his mouth destroyeth his neighbor. And we have a lot of hypocrisy going on in this world today. We have a lot of heartache and pain confusion and worry going on in this world today. We don't need to add to it by speaking evil against anyone. We don't need to add to it by speaking slander against anyone. We don't need to add to it. We need to live in righteousness as we go back to verse five. The righteousness of the perfect shall direct his way, but the wicked shall fall in his own wickedness. So I pray today you take these words to heart that you recognize the responsibility that's given to you to live in righteousness and seek uh, the perfect one so that we walk in his knowledge and his way and he'll direct our paths. And so I pray today you go forth mighty in the name of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I pray you allow him to shine on you today and be encouraged.